From the previous video, we were talking about the differences between volume, mass, boiling point, and freezing point of water. Now, of course, these properties, they measure different physical aspects of water. Okay, they're very different. But what we would like to focus is the dependency on the amount of water from these uh, properties. Okay, and then we can apply, to, apply this thinking onto other substances. So when we talk about mass and volume, okay, let's use an example to illustrate mass and volume. So if you have a hundred milliliter of water, okay, and you want to tell its volume, well, its volume is going to be a hundred milliliter, okay, very simple. And if you measure the mass on a balance or a scale, it's going to turn out to be hundred grams. Now these two numbers are the same is because the density of water is one gram per mil. Okay, meaning that for each milliliter of water, it's gonna it's gonna have a mass of one gram. Okay, that's what density means. Now let's say you pour twenty five milliliters of water from the container. Okay, what happened to the volume and the mass? Well, the volume is now changed to seventy five mils. Okay, because twenty five of twenty five milliliters of water is now gone from the container, leaving 75 of uh, 75 milliliters of water in the container. And the mass would also change from 100 grams to 75 grams. Okay, so, so that's what happened when we changed the amount of water. Okay, what happened? What happens to the volume and the mass? Now, let's take a look on the freezing point and boiling point. Okay, let's do a comparison. Okay, let's do a comparison between the 100 milliliters of water and the 75 milliliters of water. Okay, so would they freeze at different temperature or the same temperature? Would they boil at a different at a different temperature or the same temperature? Okay, well, what we find out is that the temperature the temperature uh, of boiling and freezing would remain the same. Okay, regardless of the volume, the water is still going to freeze at zero degrees Celsius. Regardless of the amount, the boiling process, the boiling process is going to start at 100 degrees Celsius for both volumes of water. Okay, so as you can see here, these two properties, the freezing point and boiling point, they are not affected by the amount of water. So therefore, you can see a huge difference between the uh, the mass and volume and freezing point and boiling point. The the difference in in terms of the dependency on the amount of substance. Okay, so we have two terms to to capture the, this kind of difference. They are intensive physical properties and extensive physical properties. So when we try to differentiate these two properties, a question that we could ask ourselves is that would the property change when the amount is different? Okay? For example, well, we talk about volume. It changes when the amount is changed. Freezing point? It doesn't change even the amount is changed. So, which is which? For intensive physical properties, they are the ones who are independent from the amount, meaning that when the amount changes, the intensive physical properties do not change, like freezing point and boiling point. Okay, so I on the uh, the first alphabet on the intensive I and independent. Okay, they are the same. And for extensive physical properties, they are the ones that that would change when the amount is changed, okay? Like mass and volume. So let's do a quick exercise here. Let's label I for intensive physical properties and E for extensive physical properties, okay? So when we look at the color and odor, okay, they are the same regardless of the amount. Water is still colorless regardless of the amount. Water is still odorless, regardless of the amount. So let's put a uh, I next to these two terms. Okay, 
And for mass and volume, we spend time to talk about these two. Okay, so we we knew that well they change when the amount is changed. So we're going to put an e next to these two. Okay, freezing point, melting point, boiling point. Um, they are independent from the amount, so they are the intensive physical properties. And for physical state, okay, water at room temperature, it's a liquid, okay, regardless of the amount. It doesn't matter if you have a drop of water, a bottle of water, a tank of water, it is still going to be a, a liquid water at room temperature, okay. So, I'm going to put an I right here, okay. So, to review, Okay, so what we can do to differentiate intensive physical properties and extensive physical properties is to ask ourselves a question. Would the property get changed when the amount is changed? If it doesn't, it will be the intensive physical property. Okay, if it does change when the amount is changed, then it will be the extensive physical property. Thank you.